Hello, my name is Marguerite Edelman and I'm a member of People for Peace and Security, Cancel the F-35s, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, and the Champlain Valley Chapter of Amnesty International. The harrowing scenes of paramilitary style units in the streets of American cities like Portland has shocked so many of us in America. And ironically, while we're shocked, those who work and report on border security and immigration here and internationally will tell you that this is actually how the U.S. has and is operating around the world. A recent international poll listed the U.S. as the most feared nation in the world. We need to own up to our rights-violating war-based foreign policy and its connections to militarized policing, policing and racism here at home. And we need to remember Martin Luther King Jr.'s radical call to action against the giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism. Since the beginning of the Trump administration, U.S. military spending has increased by more than 100 billion, almost 20 percent. And there's no other part of the federal budget that has increased by that much. Not education, not housing, and not public health. The images of the news of police and federal agents wearing helmets and masks, toting assault rifles and ri riding in mine-resistant armored vehicles are not isolated incidents. They represent a national trend towards militarization. Federal programs provide surplus military equipment to police departments and have outfitted officers with firepower that is far beyond what is necessary for their jobs as protectors of our communities. The change in equipment parallels the corresponding change in attitude. Police and federal agents conceive of themselves at war with communities rather than as public servants concerned with keeping our communities safe. We need to advocate for a return to a less dangerous, more collaborative style of policing. We should not be mistaking our police officers for soldiers. For many of us locally in Vermont, the F-35 stands for what is wrong in the U.S. in terms of militarization and capitalism. The communities surrounding the Burlington International Airport voted against placing the F-35s an exorbitantly expensive, dangerous, health-damaging instrument of war in our densely populated communities where a crash or an accident is sure to result in death and toxicity to the environment. Our voices and our votes have not been heard or acknowledged. Instead, the industrial military complex has won out taking more than half of our tax dollars, doctors that dollars that we cannot spend on mental health, education, health care, environmental programs, economic justice programs, and more. Follow the money, folks. It's going to the military industrial complex. Many individuals have told us that we should just give up the fight against the F-35s. It's a done deal. But you see, that's the good thing about being an American. We don't have to give up fighting for what we believe in and what is right. On this 100th anniversary of women's suffrage, it's good to remember that we must fight for what we believe and value. And of course, we must vote in November. We must vote against those who would support policies that deploy Gestapo-like tactics on the streets of American cities. Instead, we must vote for those who give money to peace, to policies that benefit people and our planet. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Gwendolyn Hallsmith, and I represent Vermonters for a New Economy and Extinction Rebellion. I'm also running for the legislature. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the economics of fascism and its consequences for humanity and nature. And with three minutes, I thought I'd focus on the most important things. 
the dramatic increase in oppressive state violence we've seen over the last few weeks is the logical outcome of a militarized economy that's been increasingly unjust for a century now. To roll back fascism, we need to demilitarize Vermont and we need to demilitarize the United States. One F-35 plane costs between 94 and $112 million. This year, the state of Vermont lost $89 million in the tax revenue we need to support our schools. One F-35 plane would close that gap. As a country, we spend $98 billion a year on nuclear weapons, maintaining them, upgrading them, keeping them operational for what? For a nuclear war we're gonna fight? It's collective insanity. The annual appropriations for nuclear weapons would pay for every Vermonter to have a comfortable, universal, basic income for almost seven years. Now the Pentagon has put forward a modernization plan for nuclear weapons that includes $234 billion for strategic nuclear delivery systems, weapons, and submarines, $15 billion for tactical nuclear weapons, $106 billion for weapons, laboratories, and production facilities, and $77 billion for command and control. This totals $432 billion. Eliminating that program could for provide Vermonters with a comfortable, universal, basic income for almost 30 years. We are the proverbial frogs in the pot, which has been getting hotter and hotter throughout our lifetime. As a municipal employee, I've watched as the federal government has provided military gear to our police departments here in Vermont, while social services, special education, and environmental programs go unfunded. In the last four years, we've watched as the federal government builds a wall between us and our southern neighbors, while we violate international conventions by taking children from their parents and putting them in cages. Yeah. It's here in Vermont, too. You can go through any border crossing now and see the cages that they've put there for people who they deem less than human. It's monstrous. It's monstrous, and it needs to stop. We have choices. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We have choices as Americans. We need to reject the fear and scarcity-based logic of the fascist state and choose peace and prosperity. I'm reminded of Sitting Bull, who told of two wolves who lived inside of him and were constantly fighting. One was evil, which is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> the other is good. Joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. When asked which wolf would win the fight, Sitting Bull said, the one you feed. Right now, we're feeding the wrong wolf. And if I'm elected to the legislature, I'll make sure that I work to keep Vermont feeding the right one. Thank you. My name is Stan Hills. I live in Burlington, um, the east side. Um, every, almost every day we are interrupted by the F-35s. And as loud and annoying as that is, there's a lot of other issues. I'm here to talk about ask everybody here to boycott Burlington Airport, use a different airport, if, if and when we ever fly again. But Burlington Airport is hosting the F-35s. In the 1980s, Vermont led the world in being against nuclear war. Back then, the Soviet Union, then Soviet Union and the U.S. had 10,000 nuclear weapons each. The little example Vermont set became a worldwide movement Helen Caldicott in Australia, and so on. By 1986, we had the START agreements and so on going. Uh, Trump is now breaking those agreements. The F-35s are first strike nuclear weapons. The Pentagon is arming them with a variable nuclear missile. They're placing them in different places, and they're training our National Guard to fly them. Um, you know, whether they'll be used in Venezuela, Iran, or World War III is just a, is just a question if we don't oppose these things. Every, talking about climate change, every time they fly, they burn a thousand gallons of fuel. They're the biggest carbon emitters in Vermont. 
so they're they're here to destroy the world. They're here to destroy the world in, in a nuclear way. They're here to destroy the world in an environmental way, and they are helping. You know, if you want to fight fascism, you have to talk about the military. It's not just defund the police, not just get rid of ICE. Our military budget has gone up over two hundred billion dollars since Trump was elected. We spent. We now spend more than the next ten countries. Um, combined, do you feel any safer? Because public safety is getting rid of poverty, giving people medical care, and so on. Public safety is not the um, arming the military. Anyway, at that table over there, Marguerite, um, with, behind the piece is the best shield shield, um, has information on the boycott if you're interested, but please don't fly out of Burlington. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Bernie Carver. I live in Burlington. I've been involved with the peace movement for about 56 years now. Boy, am I getting old. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, share a couple of data points I've discovered recently in my uh, research about the F-35. I was curious about what we get for our, the $100 million we spend on airplanes. and. Um, I looked up uh, well, how many times the U.S. has been involved in aerial combat in the last 30 years. And um, according to Google, it's twice. Uh, both occurred in 2017. We had to shoot down one of our own drones that had gone errant in Afghanistan, so that one doesn't really count. We shot down a jet fighter in uh, Syria that year also, so we know how well that's turned out. The other thing our planes do is rain death and destruction on poor brown people on the other side of the world. Uh, that's a strategy that didn't work in World War II. It, we tripled down on it in Vietnam. We know how that worked out as well. And uh, ever since then, we've found that uh, raining death and destruction on other people, it's not a good way to persuade them over to your point of view. It teaches them to hate and want to kill you. The same is true with violence on our streets here. The other uh, data point I discovered that I thought was interesting is that the Defense Department spends a billion dollars a year on advertising. This is what I think it might be if we spent a billion dollars a year advertising the Peace Corps. I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. Though. And if you've noticed the ads for the military, it shows uh, young people looking at computer screens, um, oh, fighting fires and uh, doing disaster rescues doesn't show them dropping bombs and killing people on the other side of the world. I, I think there should be a disclaimer also, if you sign up for this, 22 of you are going to commit suicide each day in the future. So there should be disclaimers and truth in advertising and all of this, I think. Well, anyway, thanks for being here and thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Ed Stanick, and I'm from Barry City. Uh, I wanted to make you aware of specific action that some of us are asking the people in the building behind us to take when the legislature reconvenes on August 25th to try and put up a shield to protect us from fascism in Vermont. It involves two topics. Number one, establishing a bright line on the limits of federal criminal jurisdiction in Vermont. Number two, to prepare for the potential federalization of the Vermont National Guard. Now what we've asked is that the Senate and the House Judiciary Committees, with the assistance of the Attorney General, and there are detailed requests to them on all this, that they convene hearings to establish the extent of federal criminal jurisdiction. It is not carte blanche. We've provided them with legal authorities dating back to the 1800s. I'm not making this up. The root of this is in a famous Supreme Court decision which affirmed the Fugitive Slave Act. How, how incredibly coincidental is that? And Henry David Thoreau and others pointed out, and the Supreme Court agreed, that there are steps that states can take uh, to limit federal jurisdiction criminally. So the legislature's coming back on August 25th. They're going to have all reasons why they should not do something. They can suspend rules if they want to. They should convene public hearings and take testimony on us. And Attorney General Donovan should get off his ass and do something in a creative and proactive way. Why should we do this now? Some of them are going to say we could wait until January. You know what? Some of us think there may not be legislative sessions in this country come January. Better to be proactive and creative now. So topic number one is we're urging people to contact their senators and House reps to ask 
the Judiciary Committees to have hearings on limiting federal criminal jurisdiction in Vermont. Topic number two, the National Guard. We like to feel folksy and romantic in the state of Vermont that the Vermont National Guard are the Green Mountain boys and girls, right? They're our militia. Well, the harsh reality is in this country during the Cold War of the 1950s, the federal government subsumed the National Guard into the federal forces. We go through this charade every couple of years where the legislature, quote unquote, elects the adjutant general of the Vermont National Guard. Meanwhile, they're deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq. So the point is this. We've asked the Senate Government Operations Committee and the House Committee on General Affairs and Military Affairs to convene joint hearings to bring in the Adjutant General and other people and put the question to them. If President Trump federalizes the National Guard, to whom will the Adjutant General and his forces have fidelity and loyalty, to Vermonters or to Donald Trump? Now, some of us, unfortunately, know the answer to that question, but it has to be put out in public. These hearings are not all about just passing legislation. They're about fact-finding and informing Vermonters. I think Vermonters need to know what is the answer on the potential federalization of the National Guard so people can prepare to take appropriate action in this state if necessary. So again, in closing, I urge you to contact your senators and your House reps. Ask them to have these committees have hearings come August on these two topics limit federal criminal jurisdiction in Vermont. Number two, what is going to happen, God help us, if the Vermont National Guard is federalized? Thank you. All right. So I think uh, everyone's aware that this is the 75th anniversary of the dropping of bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So 75, that's, that's a big year. That's three quarters of a century. It's is it time for celebration or what? What I would like us to do, what I would like to do in the three minutes I have is look back at 75 years ago. What was born then? What, uh, what got created? And when you look at 1945, you see that there were actually twins that were created. Twins that have lived with us today and are and they want to kill each other, frankly. One is the United Nations was born in 1945, and the bombs were dropped in 1945. So those two forces have been uh, in competition, in struggle, all of those, all of those years. So what I'm proposing here is that um, what we need to do is we need to retire one of them. We need to retire the nuclear weapons. We need to cut them up and put them in boxes and let them molder uh, in a repository somewhere. And we need to re rejuvenate the other one. We need to listen to the United Nations. We need to give it more power. We need to hear what Secretary General Gutierrez has been saying support the global ceasefire. This is an amazing concept. And many countries apparently are uh, putting down their weapons during this uh, virus. And you know, he also says uh, the folly of war cannot really compete with the, the, the fury of the virus. So that is my my mes mission, my message today, to uh, support the ceasefire, uh, support uh, ending war, and come to the uh, procession in Burlington on Hiroshima Day, which is Thursday, Thursday at 6 p.m. We're going to meet at the head of Church Street with bread and puppet, walk to the waterfront, and sing and uh, float the candle boats. And so we would love to have a big crowd there, and you are all invited. Thank you. OK, friends. Well, I want to, again, thank you all for coming here. And just to remind you that the Constitution begins with, we the people. We are the sovereigns. 
We are the one who will make the changes necessary. So organize, vote, talk with your neighbors, vote, talk with your friends, and organize again and vote. Thank you very much for being here.